Hi, in this video I thought we'd look at some of the uh, uh, useful features in R2 uh, for view. Um, the first one being some of the changes we've made to the path tracer, so we'll get straight into looking at that. So we've got a set very simple scene, you can see there's just a sphere, um, which we're going to uh, use initially to look at uh, one of the features. So if I turn on interactive uh, path tracing, so we've got the sphere. So what we're going to look at is the change uh, in this case in terms of the material. So I'm going to load a material and I'm going to load a substance material. So you can see I've got a, a whole bunch of substance materials here. So I'm just going to use this one for now because it illustrates what we're going to be talking about. So if I load this, um, we should immediately see that um, the material has been applied but one of the new features for the path tracer is the path tracer now supports um, tileable or, or scalable uh, materials so we can now change the size of this material say to 0.25 so you can see the interactive path tracer updates immediately and you should also be seeing uh, quite obviously that the path tracer now properly supports um, displacement so we can go into the material and we can look at the displacement tab and we can change the displacement and as you can see the interactive path tracer immediately updates to show us uh, just how much damage we've just done to our material so if I just reduce that down a little bit so that's one of the features which is the fact that um, you know we can now control our displacement which is correctly shown within the interactive path tracer and the path tracer render engine another new little feature which has been added is the ability to put a backdrop in so if I double click on the main camera and I click on the backdrop we can now use an image as a backdrop so they load exactly the way they've always loaded in terms of uh, either a bitmap or a JPEG, TIFF, etc. So if I double click that, do I want the whole image sequence? No, I don't. I just want that background. I'm not going to override the atmosphere, but I might as well just click OK. So now again, the viewport is updated just get rid of that because I don't need that and you'll see in our uh, different ports there is the backdrop which obviously follows the camera around so if I click on the sphere and I rotate the sphere you'll see that the backdrop has moved rotated and remains within our field of view so I'm just going to control Z that and put that back to where we were so that's two of the features I'm going to move on with a new scene where we'll look at a couple more features. Another feature we've uh, added in R2 uh, in terms of the path tracer is one which um, uh, we, we take for granted in view in many respects, but it's just the ability to, to, to backlight a, an object. So. A very simple scene to demonstrate this. I've got a simple two-dimensional plane, just a flat colour, nothing clever. And hiding behind is a, a photogrammetry model of a, of a dancer. So if I just edit the material for the, uh, the plane, we go to effects and we can now backlight the object. And you can see the sun is projecting the shadow of the dancer onto that surface. This is uh, particularly useful, obviously, within plants in terms of uh, shadows projected from behind on the leaves, etc. So it's just a nice little feature which uh, makes using the path tracer much more enjoyable. Um, I hope you find a good use for it. One of the other new features in R2 in terms of the pass tracer is we've now enabled the ability to uh, use coloured highlights. So just as a quick demonstration I'll load uh, another substance material because they're, they're quite nice and we get good detail. So I'm going to use this tram tunnel ceiling 
material and I'll just reduce the size of it so we can see the detail a little bit better so okay at the moment um, it, it has essentially no highlights so I'm going to edit the material and I'll just initially change from black to white and then we can see we've got uh, a much more metallic feel even though I know it's uh, probably a concrete material I can't really tell I'm just using it to demonstrate the fact that now we have not only highlights but we can add colored highlights so this again is dependent upon your scene and your materials but we've added this ability um, just to further enhance the uh, path tracer and uh, hopefully in, in coming releases we'll have more new features to make the path tracer either even more functional for your renders The last feature we'll look at in terms of the improvements to the path tracer is the support of emissive materials or materials which give off light. In the scene I'm using, you can see I just have a plane and a cube. I've simply set this up so that you, I've created a completely pitch black environment to demonstrate this. And you can see I'm using the interactive path tracer. So on the plane, I'm going to apply an emissive material. So I'm going to load a material. Uh, and this is going to be another substance material which is the flowing lava um, the preview doesn't show us that it's emissive but I know it is so let's go ahead and apply that and the interactive viewport refreshes immediately and begins to resolve the uh, the look of the material but you can see already that as the uh, uh, render updates that A, we have not only luminosity in terms of the, the plane itself, but it's also emitting light uh, on the floor of the cube and the walls of the cube. This is a really nice little feature, which I think is going to help with all our path tracer renders in the future. And just for the sake of clarity, here's a path tracer render which shows the material in its, in its full glory which even further emphasizes the uh, emissive nature of the uh, material by showing how the light is being cast both below the material and above. <laughs>